This video reviews body organization and specialized cells. The body is organized by complexity, starting with the smallest and least complex component, which is a cell. The cell is followed by tissues. A tissue is a group of similar cells that work together to perform specific functions. For example, nervous tissue is made of nerve cells. Tissues are followed by organs. An organ is made of different kinds of tissues that function together. For example, the brain is an organ that is made of nervous tissue and has blood vessels. Organs are followed by the largest and most complex component, organ systems. An organ system is a group of organs that work together to perform major functions. For example, the brain is part of the nervous system. Therefore, in order from smallest and least complex to largest and most complex is a cell, tissue, organ, then organ system. This image shows body organization from smallest to largest, starting with a heart cell, then heart tissue, then the heart, which is an organ, and the circulatory system. The major organ systems of the body include the respiratory system, the nervous system, the digestive system, the circulatory or cardiovascular system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the reproductive system. Specialized cells are cells that perform specific functions that benefit the entire organisms. Cells share a division of labor, meaning that one type of cell does one kind of job, while other cells do other jobs. Some cells also have specialized shapes. Examples of specialized cells include red blood cells. Red blood cells have no nucleus, so more space is available to carry oxygen using hemoglobin. White blood cells. A certain type of white blood cell has a lobed or flexible nucleus so that the cell can change shape to ingest bacteria. Nerve cells. Nerve cells have long axons to reduce the number of nerve cells required to transmit an impulse. There are many dendrites, so many connections are made with other nerve cells. Other examples include sperm cells. Sperm cells have a long tail to enable it to swim to the ovum or egg cell. Sperm cells are sex cells. Egg or ovum cell. Egg or ovum cell is a large cell with food storage, so the egg survives until it is fertilized by a sperm. It has a protective coating, which is dissolved by enzymes present in the sperm cells. Rods and cones. Rod and cone cells are found in the retina, which is in your eye. They have an elongated shape with a large surface area, which contains pigments and contributes to vision. Stem cells are also specialized cells. Stem cells have the remarkable potential to develop into many different cell types in the body during early life and growth. There are different types of stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are from embryos. Embryonic stem cells are derived from a four or five day old human embryo. The embryos are usually extras that have been created in IVF or in vitro fertilization clinics where several eggs are fertilized in a test tube, but not all are implanted into a woman. Somatic or adult stem cells. These stem cells are relatively rare, undifferentiated cells found in many organs and tissues. These stem cells have been found in tissues such as the brain, bone marrow, blood, blood vessels, skeletal muscles, skin, and the liver. Induced pluripotent stem cells. These are somatic or adult cells reprogrammed to enter an embryonic stem cell-like state by being forced to express factors important for maintaining the stemness of embryonic stem cells. Perinatal stem cells are stem cells that researchers have discovered in amniotic fluid in addition to umbilical cord blood stem cells. Amniotic fluid 
fills the sac that surrounds and protects a developing fetus in the uterus. Researchers have identified stem cells and samples of amniotic fluid drawn from pregnant women during a procedure called amniocentesis, which is a test conducted to test for abnormalities. Most, uh, more study of amniotic fluid stem cells is needed to understand their potential. You should know that there are different types of stem cells, but you do not have to memorize them. Researchers hope to use stem cells to increase understanding of how diseases occur by watching stem cells mature into, into cells in bones, heart muscle, nerves, and other organs and tissues, researchers and doctors may better understand how diseases and conditions develop. Researchers also hope to use stem cells to generate healthy cells to replace disease cells. Stem cells can be guided into becoming specific cells that can be used to regenerate and repair diseased or damaged tissues in people. People who might benefit from stem cell therapies include those with spinal cord injuries, type 1 diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, stroke, burns, cancer, and osteoarthritis. Stem cells may have the potential to be grown to become new tissue for use in transplant and regenerative medicine. Researchers continue to advance the knowledge on stem cells and their application in transplant and regenerative medicine. Researchers also hope to use stem cells to test new drugs for safety and effectiveness. Before using new drugs in people, some types of stem cells are useful to test the safety and quality of the investigational drugs. For testing of new drugs to be accurate, the cells must be programmed to acquire properties of the types of cells to be tested. Techniques to program cells into specific cells continue to be studied. For instance, nerve cells could be generated to test a new drug for a nerve disease. Tests could show whether the new drug had any effect on the cells and whether the cells were harmed or not.